I am Shalitha Robertson, and I want to serve as your Superior Court Judge. For more than 30 years, I've served the public as a police officer, a public defender, and a city attorney. I love America. I respect the Constitution. I'll be effective, efficient, fair, and firm. I'll be an interpreter of the law, not an advocate. I am Shalitha Robertson, and I'm ready to be your judge. On May 20th, vote Shalitha Robertson. Experience we can trust. A few moments later. Channel 2 Investigates has learned a former Atlanta City attorney and Atlanta Police Department officer has been indicted on charges that she stole pandemic relief funds. A Georgia jury convicts an Atlanta lawyer of defrauding the federal government out of more than $7 million in Paycheck Protection Program funds. A jury of seven men and five women found Shalitha Robertson used the funds to buy a Rolls Royce, Royce car, Lord have mercy, a motorcycle and 10 carat diamond ring for $148,000 among other things. And on top of all that, they believe that she donated some of that money to Fannie Willis to help her get elected to DA. This is Shalitha Robertson. She's a former Atlanta assistant city attorney and an ex-cop in Georgia's largest city. Now, Robertson was arrested for defrauding the PPP program. For those of you who don't know, that's the payment protection program that was initiated under COVID. Now, if you guys don't remember, during COVID, during the government shutdown, businesses weren't allowed to open. So if businesses can't open, they can't pay their employees. So the government decided to help businesses pay their employees instead of just firing them because COVID wasn't going to be forever. So you had the PPP program where the government essentially would pay your employees for you. And then after they lifted the lockdowns, you can go back to business and keep all your employees. Now, the program was really vulnerable to a lot of fraud because the government didn't really have the infrastructure in place to verify what people were telling them. And since people really needed the money at this time, they kind of allowed people to say whatever they needed to say to kind of get the money and then would verify it later. And now you see a lot of this fraud is being exposed because the government said, we'll trust you because we need you to get you the money and then we'll verify things later. And now, as they're verifying things later, you get people like Miss Robertson. Shanitha, I'm sorry, Shalitha Renee Robinson was it Robertson was indicted on charges that she stole millions of tax dollars. Hello, it's Justin Gray with Channel 2. I'm trying to reach Shalitha Robertson. No answer at the call box to the front gates of Chateau Royale, the grand South Fulton estate listed with the Secretary of State as the principal address of Shalitha Robertson's company, the Renee Group. Shalitha Renee Robertson is a former Atlanta police officer and Atlanta city attorney who currently has a lucrative contract with DeKalb County worth millions to repair sewage and water systems. She's also just been charged in this federal indictment, alleged to have stolen $7 million in COVID relief, paycheck protection program funds, and intended to help keep people employed during the pandemic. In a Channel 2 Action News investigation last month, we found more than 553,000 Georgia businesses received PPP loans, totaling more than $24 billion just in Georgia. But federal prosecutors told us that tens of millions of dollars of that money here in Georgia went to fake companies trying to steal your tax dollars. So as you can see, people were robbing the PPP program like it was going out of style. And it seems like that's what happened with Ms. Robertson. Goes back to what I've always told you. Don't ever chase the money. Mm -hmm. The money will come. Chase the universe, not the bag. That's it. Chase your passion, baby. Chase your dream. The money will come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the money will come courtesy of the American taxpayers. Reports say that Robertson, along with her co-conspirators, submitted fraudulent PPP loan applications for multiple companies that they own, inflating their employee numbers and payroll amounts to receive larger loans than they were entitled to. Now, Robertson even involved her family, transferring $50,000 of PPP funds to her daughter. Now, the transfer is part of a broader misuse of funds, which also included large cash withdrawals and significant payments to her co-conspirator, Sandra Norton. Now, Norton was another attorney in the area who had pled guilty earlier and was cooperating with federal authorities. Now, Robertson got, I think, about $15 million in pandemic money, and she used that money and flossed it hard. She bought a Rolls Royce, motorcycles, houses, and a 10-carat diamond ring that cost about $140,000.
but she also spread the wealth out in other ways. For instance, she gave $1,000 to Fannie Willis's Democratic primary election campaign. Now, Robertson was hoping to become a judge in Fulton County. She had ran for the position in 2010 and lost in the primary. Then when Willis started running for a district attorney, she supported Willis in hopes to have Willis's support when she ran for judge again. Now, I'm gonna stop here real quick because let's say you're injured because of someone else's negligence. Things like car accidents, truck accidents, defective products, or defective drugs. Give me a call at 571-NATE-LAW. That's 571-NATE-LAW. Or you can also click on the link in the description. Now, we can represent you or we can help you find the right attorney. Now, it's incredibly important to speak to an attorney right away to protect your rights. Now, obviously, this is not good news for Fonnie Willis. See, for those of you who don't know, Fonnie Willis was found to be having a relationship with one of her prosecutors. Matter of fact, the top prosecutor who was prosecuting the Trump case. Now, it was found out that during this sexual relationship, the person that she had hired to prosecute the Trump case was taking her on these lavish vacations across the world, spending thousands and thousands of dollars on her. Now, that generally would be okay, but the money that he was using to take her on these trips was the same money that she was paying him to prosecute Trump. That turns into a conflict of interest. Fonnie Willis then told the court that she actually paid her boyfriend back in cash and no one really believed that. Did you ever pay him anything other than cash? I've only given cash a few times in, in the course of what we're talking about. So you yeah, never would go to dinner. Him, let her finish her answer. If we would go to dinner, I wouldn't give him cash because he paid for dinner or I paid for dinner. I've given him cash only a few times in life, probably four. Probably the most money I've ever handed him is $2,500. The least amount of money I've handed him, probably between $500 and $1,000. You never wrote him a check? Ma'am, I don't have checks. Okay. Um, so you have no proof of any reimbursement for any of these things because it was all cash, right? The testimony of one witness is enough to prove a fact. So my question you was, do you have any proof? Is that what you're intimating right here? So at the end of the day, the court said, that, well, hey, Either you can drop this case or you got to fire your boyfriend. She fired her boyfriend. And now an appeals court said, well, hold on. This thing stinks to high hell. Before you can move on, we're going to look at this one more time to make sure the judge got it right. Breaking news. A Georgia appeals court has now agreed to take up the Trump team's appeal of the Fonnie Willis disqualification ruling. Now, a lower court had already ruled that Willis can remain on that case. So what happens there now? So the, the, the Trump team wants to appeal the decision. They would like Fonnie Willis kicked off the case entirely. Uh, the judge has ruled that Fonnie Willis could stay as long as her former paramour, Nathan Wade, uh, was removed from the case to avoid even the appearance uh, of any kind of a conflict. So he's off the case. Fonnie Willis is on. Uh, the appellate court has agreed to take up the matter. They haven't you know, agreed to any decision, but they've at least agreed to take it up. So what this holdup does is now push the potential trial back after the election. Why is that important? Well, if Trump is elected president while he is being prosecuted in Georgia, that prosecution has to be stopped until after he finishes his presidency because he'll have what's called sovereign immunity. Each president of the United States can't be prosecuted in any court in the world because of the concept of sovereign immunity. They are essentially the head of state and head of government of the United States. So they can't be prosecuted for crimes while in office. They'll have to get kicked out of office or leave office and then you can be prosecuted for crimes. So this could potentially end the Fannie Willis case if Trump is elected. Now, our wannabe judge Robertson was given seven years, seven years in the big house because of her fraud, and she'll still have to serve three years after she comes out on supervised release. Now, she's 62. That means she'll be dealing with this until she's about 72. Now, it's crazy because this woman was an attorney, a police officer, a city attorney. She's got a beautiful daughter and she's got all this stuff going for her. She's running to be a judge and she's out there fleecing the government blind. $15 million stolen, which is insane. Now, as the New York Post reports, Robertson broke down in tears upon hearing her sentence. 
seven years hard time and she was telling the court that she was dead broke my business is gone my law license is gone my assets are gone the only thing i have left is my family and my faith in god she said so at the end of the day justice was served i believe this woman did what she did and now is getting just desserts i just feel bad because the taxpayers are the ones out of the money she's not going to be able to pay that money back she's going to be sitting in a prison cell for the next 10 years now it's wild because i think the people who did get a lot of that money maybe her daughter her family Family and all people should definitely have to pay that money back wherever that money was funneled to and hopefully they can get back something so now at the end of the day what do you think should happen should you, do you think number one should Fonnie Willis give back that one thousand dollars you really don't know if it's PPP money or not but because this question is there I think it'd be an easy thing to say here's that thousand dollars back I don't want any money from any potential fraud also what about the seven years do you think that's too much time because even though they're gonna have to pay back the 15 million dollars you can't pay it back if you're doing seven years in prison. So essentially, the government's giving up on that money. It's going to probably take all the assets that she got, maybe get the money back from the daughter, which she sent her like 50 grand or whatever. And, you know, what are you getting? Pennies on a dollar? But I don't think the government's going to get that $15 million back. And since this woman's locked up for seven years, they're not going to be able to get it from her. What can she do in prison that's going to make her, what, millions of dollars? So at the end of the day, it's always the taxpayer getting screwed. What can you do? Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do all that great YouTube stuff. My name is Nate Lloyd, and I'm going to see you in the next one.